Finalmente estou chegou em São Paulo. After all these times, after all these times of traveling in Brazil, been to Nordeste, Rio, Minas, Goiás, everyone's always said you need to come to São Paulo, and here I am, estou aqui in São Paulo. So today we're going on some little ventures. We're first gonna impressions. first impressions. It's gonna be my first impressions of São Paulo. We're gonna go head over to Liberdade and check out. What are we checking out in Liberdade? <laughs> I don't actually know São Paulo very well. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna head over to um, Liberdade to check out the Japan time. So I'm very curious about this. Many people told me about it. So I wanna see how it is. Does it live up to expectation? I've seen so many YouTube videos of São Paulo. So to be here is strange. So uh, let's go check it out. Let's see what my first impressions of São Paulo are. Let's do it. So we just arrived in Japan town. I'm gonna take a little walk around and see what's going on. And see what this Japan town is all about. So guys, as you can see, we have this completely unique, something you don't ever see anywhere else in Brazil. This whole town is a Japanese influence. You even have like uh, the traffic lights, have uh, Japanese writing on them. And there's loads of, Japanese inspired shops or Japanese shops that sell Japanese products. See this it's like a Japanese architecture. It's super cool. It's really cool. Olia ki. Jajim Oriental. It's funny like this uh fusion of uh, Japanese and, and also Brazilian culture. You have like cafes here that sell some Brazilian foods and Japanese foods. Oh, you can even have Pikachu here. I don't know how he's coping in this heat wearing that thing because I could not wear that. That looks difficult, right? I don't know how he's wearing it. I would be dying in there. <laughs> so we just came to coffee selfie because I just need to do this. I've seen it on a YouTube video and I need to do it myself. And look at the weather change as well. Shuvendo. Okay, let's go take a look at this coffee selfie. Olha aqui. A chuva. I think we're gonna stay here for a while, guys. <laughs> Until the rain stops at least. Look at it. Oh, look at you. It's me. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm going to show you the picture that I posted for them to do. I wanted it with a penguin, but unfortunately, um, they couldn't fit the penguin on as well. But uh, you got my wonderful face here. <laughs> Face has got smaller now. <laughs> slowly disappearing. I'm slowly disappearing. So I'm still there, but I've become slightly deformed. But I survived <laughs> till the end of the trip. <laughs> ah, look at that face. It's ridiculous. So we just visited the uh, Museum of History of Immigration for Japanese in Brazil. And although I can't recite all the information, it was a very interesting uh, place to go and, and kind of learn about the, the history of Japanese immigrants here in Brazil. Um, it started in the early 1900s, just after they abolished slavery here in Brazil. Um, there was a lot of work needed to be done on the coffee plantations here in Brazil. And they built relations with Japan and wanted to export a lot of coffee to Japan. Um, so Japan, agreed to send over some workers to come here and work in Brazil. And that's where it started, the immigration of Japanese in Brazil. So a lot of the immigrants came directly to Sao Paulo to work on the coffee plantations. And 
the communities started to grow here and after they finished their contracts with the coffee plantations they began to work independently basically and start their own kind of Japanese colonies and start to build their own influence here in Sao Paulo. A lot of them moved around the rest of Brazil up to the north in the Amazon down to the south as well to start other farms and plantations and, and the immigration continued right up until the Second World War where immigration was halted because of conflict between Brazil and Japan um, so there was a big kind of conflict between the countries and they stopped um, people stopped immigrating from Japan after the World War II things were settled and more Japanese immigrants continued to come over to Brazil right up till today where there's about estimated 2 million Japanese immigrants about a population of 2 million people with Japanese ethnicity here in Brazil um, and I think estimated about a million in Sao Paulo alone there is a big population of people in Sao Paulo with Jap uh, Japanese background and ethnicity and that's where it all comes from it's a long history and a long many stories involved in those histories escape the rain because it's raining so much we cannot we wanted to get back to the apartment to drop some stuff back but we can't do it so instead we just stop for a kashinya kashinya break it's the only way to, to get out of the rain so a question for you guys which way do you start your kashinya because i always go bottom first right i like to finish at the, at the, with, the, with the tip at the bottom so i start here where do you start one everyone's different right? but i like i like to start here very good casino, by the way. So we just arrived back at the apartment to drop some things off. Um, Japan time was super cool and interesting to learn about the history. When people think of Brazil, they don't really think of uh, Brazil having this big Japanese community. And to learn about how far that, that the history of that community goes back was really interesting. It's also good to show that in my vlog for other people that are gonna watch it, um, to show them the history of the, the Japanese culture here in Brazil. So. What are we doing next? We are going to head over to try and meet Robert. Robert is uh, a long, long time subscriber of mine. He's been watching my videos since I really started the channel, to be honest. And I ran a competition earlier this week to give away some British snacks and he actually won the competition. Um, since he lives around Sao Paulo, he's actually in the city at the moment. So we're gonna quickly go over to meet him so I can actually give these gifts to him in person. So that's gonna be cool. And I don't know, we're gonna try and hang out for a bit. And yeah, it's just it's gonna be cool to meet one of my subscribers, especially someone who's like, I've been talking to for such a long time. Um, so that's what we're gonna do next. Down, I must have key from Hobbit. <laughs> so I'm gonna give over these little snacks that I brought from England as Robert luckily won them on Instagram. Thank <laughs> <laughs> so you. Bit, you know, damaged. <laughs> very, very damaged. Very flashy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what's this, to be honest. What's this? Okay. <laughs> don't know, how, how you said it's like a beef, beef. It's a beef, beef, kind of like a pie, yeah, like a, a little bit like an empada <laughs> in a tin. Like a empada in a lata. Empada in a lata. Pudding, see. Now I'm home. No. 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 Ten. 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 Ten.
É um. Hum. Ele é crocante. Muito que crocante. Que tem muito chocolate também. Tem muito chocolate. Hum. So we're in the building of Sesc, which has a crazy view over Avenida Paulista. You see how big this city is? É louco. Oh, yeah. uh, super high. I don't know how high we're up at the moment, but it is high. It is high. Oh, people see a show, Robert. People see a show. Very sensational. 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 They made up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eu também. Muito alto. Holy aqui. Look how crazy that is. This airplane is flying so low, it's landed in uh, Gaurulhos. I didn't catch this flight, I caught the other one. But it's crazy, it's flying amongst these buildings really low. I've seen like videos of it before. I've never, never been on a flight. So we're here in Avenida Paulista now, we're just trying to walk a little bit up the road because it stopped raining a little bit. Um, for me, I haven't been to New York before, uh, this kind of area of Sao Paulo or like Sao Paulo in general gives me that kind of like New York vibe. When you compare it to like cities in Europe, for London for example, if you go up like a, a tall building you can see right across the horizon. We were just in Sesc and the skyline across there is like you cannot see the horizon, it's just buildings upon buildings upon buildings. It's a far more denser city than you see in, for example, in, in Paris or Germany or England. It's a huge city. It's probably one of the biggest cities I've been to. It's probably bigger than New York. So, yeah, it's very dense. But unfortunately, because it's rained so much, we've not been able to walk around. We've kind of had to take shelter. Um, tomorrow, we're gonna try and go to the, the market where it's gonna be undercover. So it's gonna be better because I think tomorrow's gonna rain like all day. Um, so we'll see what adventures tomorrow brings. Now we're gonna go test out the Sao Paulo pizza because I really wanna try the Sao Paulo pizza. So we're gonna head over to Brass. Uh, I've been told it's a very famous restaurant here in Sao Paulo. So we're gonna head over to there and try the pizza. For example, like this, these roads here for me, it's like, you don't really see this in London. It's, it's a lot more like New York for me. It's super busy. There's a lot of cars. Oh, you ran. And there's a lot of people walking past as well. But it's like, I don't know. For me, the, obviously one of the most different things about it is that the fact that it's like South American, it has this big like South American influence, Brazilian influence, which makes it a lot more unique. It's strange for me having been to uh, many different cities in Brazil and now coming to Sao Paulo. It's almost like another little world. It's, it's almost like another country here. It's not, it doesn't, it feels like Brazil, but doesn't feel like Brazil. It doesn't feel like the Brazil I know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely different for me. It's very interesting. We're gonna explore some more of these next few days and we'll see what I conclude. So, Braz Pizza, that was an experience, a very good experience. I was very impressed with the service, it is, it's, it's very attentive. They don't let you serve your own pizza, they, they make sure they keep an eye on you and when you finish your plate they come over and offer you another slice of the pizza which they lay on the side of the table. 
Um, so yeah, this is not something that I've ever experienced before. But the, the waiters, everyone that works there, all the staff are very nice, very welcoming, very talkative, very informative if you have any questions. I was very curious about the cachaça they have there because um, when I tasted the caipirinha, I noticed that the cachaça tasted slightly different. Um, so I asked them about the cachaça and it did turn out that it was quite a unique cachaça um, that's not easy to find. I'm going to try and find a bottle because I would love to take some home. But all in all, the brass experience was, was good. Um, uh, some of the best pizza I've ever had. Like I said, I don't know why it is about San Paolo pizza. Maybe it's that Italian influence. You know, they say that there was a lot of Italian Im immigrants that moved to San Paolo. So maybe it is that Italian influence why the pizza is so good. It's probably one of the best pizza I've had in Brazil. There is something about Brazilian pizza. There is something about Brazilian pizza. I don't know why it is, but it has like a unique twist and they do it really well here. I personally would rate brass 10 out of 10. Let's get the 10, 10 fingers for me. Um, so if you're ever in Sao Paulo and you wanna find pizza, then I would recommend brass. It was a good experience for me personally. I enjoyed it a lot. Anyway guys, finish for today. Make sure you subscribe, say it's gonna be number one. Email me on Instagram, down like it if you liked the video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ati mais, ati logo, ciao.